Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new Edge of Sigmar battle report. Uh, it's 1,500 points, and this time is my Stormcast Eternals will fight against the Wanderers. This is the third um, game in a local tournament that we played in the local games workshop store of Brussels. And yeah, let's go first to make a look on the list. So the list is the same that I have shared in the two previous battle reports. It's the Lord Celestian on the start vehicle, Lord Castellan and Lord Relictor. Three units of five liberators, two units of five judicators, and a unit of prosecutors with javelins. I'm at 20 points below the 1,500 points, so in case my opponent has 1,500 points, I can go to one of the advantages. And the Wanderers. The Wanderers have a lot of characters, so they have the Nomad, Nomad Prince, who is at the same time the General, uh, Spellweaver, White Strider, White Watcher, 20 Glade Guard, 10 Willwood Rangers, 2 units of 10 Eternal Guard, uh, a unit of uh, Sisters of the Thorn, 5, uh, 10 Sisters of the Watch, uh, 1 Haunting Hound, and they have the formation uh, Waystone Pathfinders. We play uh, the mission called Border of Border War, where we have four objectives uh, to are in the middle, in, in the flanks in the middle. There is one in your deployment zone and one in the opponent deployment zone. Each time you hold uh, objective, you get points. If you hold your objective is one point. If you hold the objectives that are in the in the flanks is two points each, and if you hold the opponent's objective is four points. Uh, you every turn you count the points at the end of the battle who have made more points is winning the battle so it's important to start holding points from the beginning and try to avoid to, that the opening is holding points uh, to get a point to control a, a, a objective and uh, was meaning you need to have more um, miniatures than the opponent axis inches of the objectives uh, we go first to the deployment so yeah, we start deploying, and I deployed as you can see here. Uh, the the, the object, my objective is just next to the this house, and then there are two objectives: one at the left of the tower that you see in the middle of the battlefield, and another one in the forest. And the, uh, my opponent's objective is next to the forest that is behind the tower. So I try to deploy my start Drake Dragon. In one of the flanks, I try to control the middle with my liberators and use the prosecutors to have mobility in the opposite flank. Uh, my opponent uh, load a lot um, what is my right flank, so there I will be more conservative and I will try to push on my left flank with the start break and, and the units they have in that flank. Here we have another overview of the battlefield. Now we have a close-up of my enemy deployment of the Wanderers. So the Sisters of the Thorn are in my left flank. Then there in the forest there are all the Glade Guard with the uh, with the bows. There is the General there, the Nomad Prince, and there's also the Spell Weaver. Then there is the Sisters of the Watch and one unit of Eternal Glad. Eternal Guard, sorry, also controlling the objective in the middle. So he put uh, a lot of there. And then in the other flank there is another unit of Eternal Guard. Then there is the other close combat unit and the two characters the, that uh, he also has, the other two characters. And as well, this uh, Juggernaut, this Hairy Juggernaut, is one of the hounds. Well, one of the hounds is, and Red is the only hound. So here we have, he really load this flank. So let's see how it goes. And we go now into the turn one. He had the initiative, so the uh, Wanderers move first. And here is just at the end of the turn one. Uh, he move, uh, try to control the two objectives in the middle, uh, in the middle of the battlefield. And in my turn, I decide to be conservative in my right flank, just shoot a little bit, try to not engage, and try to score the same points as my opponent. So I move the start break directly against the Sisters of the Thorn. I did some shooting on the Sisters of the Thorns. I did some 
some damage and then the, st the start break finish the unit so uh, at the end of this turn we were controlling one of the middle objective and our objective so we did three points each at the end of the first turn here we have the other side as i said here i did not want to go for the objective i prefer to be more conservative in these first turns no need to risk there is time to try to control the battlefield so yeah he's what's controlling this objective and there in the middle we see that he has also the eternal guard and the sisters of the watch i decide to shoot a lot against the sisters of the watch and i reduce the uh, the unit to half and here we have another uh, overview and the start by controlling the uh, one of the objectives in the flanks and as I said here, I, I just uh, was using the adjudicators to try it first to do some damage before going into close combat. I have the feeling that even I'm playing against Wanderers, I have better shooting than my opponent. Or at least I have more range. As I can see, I also move a unit of Liberators to support the Star Drake and one unit of... Uh, of judicators as well as the characters where a little bit at the back I keep them just to to use this the support where they are needed and with that yeah this was at the end of the turn one and we will go to the turn two so this is the turn two for the wanderers so in his turn he just used a spell to um, regrowth to say in a way some of the Sisters of the Watch, he direct part of the Terminal Guard against my Star Drake, and then he used the special shooting, and this is getting me by surprise. He used the special shooting from the uh, Glade Guard to try to shoot and damage as much as possible the Star Drake. So the shooting from the Glade Guard had a minus 3 rent this turn. I was lucky that I put the, the Lantern on the Star Drake before, so that my Star Drake have. 2 plus armor says, but this mi minus 3 was five was moving this to 5 plus uh, armor save. So I really, uh, he really did half of my wounds, so I think he did about 6 or 7 wounds in total in the shooting. So it was quite scary, I survived, I also, I was uh, also lucky that I had the ability of the defense, so I can ignore wounds on a 6. On my Star Trek, so I really, uh, yeah, I really boost the Star Trek to to try to hold there, but I was not expecting that the Glade Guard is so powerful in the shooting. And here, yeah, he just consolidate all his units in the other forest in his turn, uh, and he, as I say, explained all the shooting he did was against my Star Trek. This is another view at, uh, before the close combat. Yeah, here we have again the overview, and at the end he decided not to assault me. So uh, he finalized the turn there. Uh, he decided not to come into close combat, and just put the eternal guard there to block the movement or the advancement of my uh, Star Trek dragon, Drake, Star Drake. Now we go into the turn 2 for the Stormcast Eternals. So, yeah, the Eternal Guard is within the objective range, so I will need to destroy this unit if I want to keep scoring 2 points in that flank. And this is what I did, so sorry that I don't have um, pictures of the turn, but what I, I moved the Star Drake and 3 inches just to be able to salt also the in Glade Guard if it's needed. I moved the Liberators to help the Star Drake and then I focused some shooting on the Eternal Guard and between the shooting and the close combat I completely destroyed the Eternal Guard and the Star Drake engaged with the Glade Guard. So this was good. Uh, in the other flank I did nothing. Uh, he still have the two units of 10 in the forest and the characters there. I have to say the Way Watcher is just next to the um, Realm Gate that is at, at the right, at the bottom right. Here you see, as I explained, in this forest I did almost nothing. I just, I, I just keeping the distances. Uh, I don't want to solder where he has the advantage. 
and I put in my liberators just to protect the adjudicators. And I also keep this, the prosecutors at 12 in more than 12 inches. They are almost at, at the limit of the range. In that way, they do two wounds for each um, wound they do. And as you can see, I am also moving the other unit of adjudicators and the Lord Relictor and the Lord Castellan are just moving, try to support the advancement of the Star Drake. Here we see, now my objective is try to clean the Glade Guard and the general and see if I can control the objective on my opponent's side so I will force my opponent to move out of the forest uh, I have to say that the spell weaver at this moment is dead because between the rain of stars I just kill him with the mortal wounds that I can do with the rain of the stars and here we have another overview but he has still a lot of eff uh, effectives between the Glade Guard and all what he have in this forest have uh, quite uh, good uh, um, units. And now, yeah, I was lucky enough and I won again the initiative. So we go into the turn 3, but now it's turn 3 for the Stone Cat Eternal. So I have two turns in a row. And yeah, I keep pushing there. I move the Judicators to control the objective. I keep advancing with the... Uh, with the Liberators and with the Star Drake, uh, I was just, I, I, I consolidate and I attack the Glade Guard. The Star Drake completely disseminate the Glade Guard, he kill them all, and with the Liberators I failed to charge, I wanted to charge the Sisters of the Watch, there is only three Sisters of the Watch surviving after the shooting, uh, but I fail, I fail to salt and this is, will cost me uh, to control the objective this turn. Because yeah, uh, if I had uh, if I had been able to kill the sister of the watch, then I would have enough eff um, effectives to control the, my opponent's objectives. Here we have, of course, in that flank, I just keep the distance. I put the liberators try to to block uh, the advancement of of my opponent in that flank. Uh, the liberators are very good in making walls. And I did some shooting, I think I killed a couple of guys, but not too much in that flank. Again, I keep the prosecutors um, too much conservative, I think I was keeping the prosecutors at this turn. I should have pushed more in that in that part of the battlefield. And we go into the turn 3 of the Wanderers. And then in the movement, he decided to move ahead, try to come and and take my objective. Uh, he see that his objective is going to be controlled by my Star Trek. He just moved with Eternal Guard and the other unit and everything that is still alive move against my my Judicators and Liberators. So then he assault, he assaulted with everything. I kill a lot of elves. He don't. He did not do a lot of damage on my liberators, but he uh, end up the turn three with more uh, miniatures next to my objectives. So at the end, he scored the four points for my objectives, and in my opponent's objective, I was not able to to control my opponent's objective because he uh, he killed some of my liberators between the shooting. And the general, his general, his, uh, the nomad prince that just assault my liberators and kill a couple of them. So he did five points and I did two points. So he was three points ahead of me at this moment. So it was a good movement. But uh, yeah, I think I have the, the I, 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 I will be able now to, to do a lot of damage on the wanderers. And with that we go into the turn 4 and I won the initiative and I decided to take the initiative on the turn 4. And maybe this was a little bit of a mistake. So in the turn 4 I just uh, moved the Star Drake to be able to assault the, the Nomad Prince and, and the Survivors, Sisters of the Watch. I think at this moment there is only one Sister of the Watch surviving. And I put the Judicators to control the objective in my right flank. And then in my uh, yeah in my side, uh, here I think I made another mistake. I should have moved the prosecutors try to hold the objective in my flank, but I just moved the prosecutors to have shooting, and I decide to shoot everything on the eternal guard and the eternal guard, and also on, on my opponent's unit. So 
and I decided to do as much damage as possible, try to kill my opponent's unit, so I also move the characters, try to, to um, completely obliterate the, my enemy. So, yeah, this is another image before the close combat. So then, in the close combat, uh, in between, first in the shooting, I, I did a lot of damage, a lot of damage on, on the units that were in close combat with my liberators. So to the point that uh, only a couple of guys were surviving, as you can see in that picture. Uh, we went into close combat. I killed the two units, the Eternal Guard and the other unit. And then the, only the Way Rider was surviving with one boon. On my, on my op on the opponent's deployment zone, I killed the Nomad Prince. And he in return, he killed almost all my Liberators. Only the Liberator Prime is surviving. So I have in that area the Star Drake and the Liberator Prime. The Judicators are controlling the other objective quite easily. So yeah, this was at the end of the turn four. Turn four so here we have another image. Uh, this is not really the end. Uh, the, these two banners uh, will die. So only the only for my opponent at the end of the turn four, the only surviving miniatures were the Way Watcher and the Way Rider. So we went to the turn four of the Wanderers. And he retreat with the white rider to hold the objective at the flank. And just the way watcher, I was not expecting that, move into the six inches of the objective. And in the shooting, he killed the liberator. So making that, uh, forcing me not to control my opponent's objectives. So remember, he was three points ahead. And this moment I scored three points and he's scoring two. So he's two points ahead of me, still two points ahead of me. And here is where we did a big mistake. This is turn four. And we forgot and we thought that we were in turn five. So we stopped the battle here and we give the victory to the Wanderers. This was really a big mistake from my side. I, I was playing conservative. I thought that I had the control of the battle. And for sure, if we had had one turn more, I had win the battle. Because he had a way watcher with two wounds and a way rider with one wound. So I was uh, I, there was no problem to kill. But we all, we all thought that this was the fifth turn. We completely lost the, the count. And we give the victory to the... Wanderers, so a surprising victory to the Wanderers, in part because of the mistake in my sight in counting the turns. So here we see another image, and only two characters with three wounds in total, and he is able to um, steal the victory. As I said, this was at the end a victory for the Wanderers, because, yeah, was my mistake. We thought that we were at the end of the turn 5, and indeed we were at the end of the turn 4. So we lost one turn, and if we had played the fifth turn, I was pretty sure that the victory was mine. Uh, there is no way that this Wade Rider with only one wound would survive, and I would have controlled all the objective in my fifth turn, because I would have to obliterate my opponent's uh, army. But, yeah. This was my mistake. I did not count. Uh, we did not count the the turns correctly, so it's a victory for the Wanderers. Uh, and that's all. So yeah, please give a like and share, and let me know what do you think. I was very happy with the performance of my army in this tournament. I will do another video explaining what are my learnings from this tournament, and I think uh, learnings of playing uh, Age of Sigma in general. So I hope you find him interesting and uh, have find this interesting. Please leave the comments below and let me know what do you think and give a like and share to support this channel if you want. And yeah, just to say that you also can support me uh, in Patreon. So if you want to support me further, uh, uh, yeah, you support in Patreon will be welcome. If not, just sharing, commenting, liking is good for me. And that's all. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you again later. Bye.